Spoiler alert, your paralegal school didn't prepare you for the reality of working as a paralegal. But you know what? None of them do. They don't tell you that there's a reason why attorneys have the reputations that they do. Hi, I'm Ann Pearson with the Paralegal Bootcamp. All right, let's jump in and get started with this episode. Now, please keep in mind what I'm about to say here does not apply to every single attorney or every school or every paralegal. But generally speaking, attorneys can be difficult to work for. They can be perfectionists who expect nothing less than perfection from everyone who works around them. They don't have a lot of patience when mistakes get made. I'd like to give you a list of things that I think schools should tell their paralegal students up front. Here's the reality from someone who's worked with attorneys of all types for the last 30 years. And it's not just my opinion. I hear it from paralegals across the country. So if you're in a paralegal certificate program now, or thinking of going into one, or recently graduated from one, you need to know these things. Now, before I jump into these things that they don't tell you, I have to preface all of these things with the fact that I loved my paralegal career. I'm not giving you this list from a negative place. It's coming from a positive place to help you be better prepared to work as a paralegal. All right, number one, new paralegals don't make a lot of money. In fact, I think it's kind of embarrassing what most places pay entry-level paralegals, especially the ones that are requiring an undergraduate degree and a paralegal certificate and all these other things. Check out an earlier episode that I did on why it's time to increase paralegal salaries. Here's why I believe that the low starting salary is embarrassing is because of number two. They don't tell you that a paralegal job is stressful, super stressful. And most of you will work long hours under that high level of stress. It's just not the type of job that you can go into the office at nine, take an hour for lunch every single day and leave every single day at five and leave the work stuff at the office. It's just not. Now, some of the stress in long hours depends on the lawyer you work with, the organization you work for, and the practice area that you work in. A word to the wise, if you absolutely have to be out of the office no later than five, either to pick up your kids at daycare or something else that's not flexible with time, choose a practice area like estate planning or immigration over litigation. Or make sure that you go to work for an attorney who's not a procrastinator. Wait, did you just spit your coffee out? I know. If you've worked in a law firm for any amount of time, you know there's no such thing. So yeah, paralegal schools need to give their paralegal students a little bit more of reality. Like, this is what you might expect. This is what you're getting yourself into. Instead, they hold career day and have working paralegals come in dressed professionally and talking about this great, interesting work that they do every day. Which leads me to number three. Some days, a paralegal's job is downright boring, monotonous, maybe even mind numbing. Paralegals get to do all of the things that attorneys don't want to do. Now, the amount of time you spend on that kind of stuff depends less and less the more experienced you become and the more you prove yourself. But even then, there will be some things that will be monotonous and boring, but necessary and critical to the delivery of legal services. I remember in my paralegal certificate program, one of the things that I enjoyed so much was this moot court competition because I was competitive. And we were arguing an appellate brief in front of a few professors. That was after researching and writing the briefs. And then we argued the briefs. It was part of the class. Do you know how many times throughout the last three decades I needed to know how to argue an appellate brief to a panel of three judges? Yeah, <laughs> none. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy that moot court competition, but maybe that time would have been better spent on teaching me how to put together a trial notebook or what a paralegal actually does in the courtroom. Okay, number four. They should also tell you that it's going to be hard to land that first position as a paralegal. They really need to stress the importance of a perfect resume, a LinkedIn profile, networking, 
and applying for the right position for you. It's not impossible, but it's not going to be easy. So you have to really show that potential employer how you are a quick learner, you take initiative, you're a problem solver, all of the things that I teach in our Paralegal Bootcamp courses. And last, but definitely not least to our list, number five, they don't tell you that you're not learning the skills that it will take for you to be a great paralegal. What you are learning is the foundation stuff, the terminology, the theory. You're memorizing the civil rules of procedure, what the definition of a subpoena is, but you're not learning what you will be doing on the job. Now, this is no different than any other career. This isn't a bash to paralegal schools. When a lawyer graduates from law school, they don't know how to do everything they're going to be doing as a new associate. They don't know how to practice law yet. When your friend graduates from college with a business management degree, it doesn't mean they know how to open and run a successful business. They have the foundation to help them get started. It's the same with the new paralegal graduate. So if you're new, someone who started at your first paralegal job and you're sitting at your desk someday saying, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing here. You're not alone. We have all said the very same thing. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can also catch me on the Paralegals on Fire podcast show or head over to paralegal-bootcamp.com to learn more. Bye for now.